The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone. I'm DJ Heckes, CEO of Exhibit, trade show marketing expert, and author of Full Brain Marketing, and co-author of The Noise Behind Business, How to Make Trade Shows Work. I hope many of you attended our last webinar from January 21st, and you're continuing with our series of webinars offered every quarter. Today's a great day if you've set a goal to be more innovative in your marketing. So welcome to the noise behind business, how to make trade shows work for you in 2014. Today we'll be covering the why and how to select trade shows that actually fit your marketing strategy for developing a return on your trade show dollar once you commit to trade show marketing as part of your innovation. You know, it's interesting with over 30, year, 30 shows a day and 30 million attendees that selecting the right shows that match your objectives, it can be overwhelming and challenging. So knowing where to begin and having that end in mind is what will determine your success. When you exhibit at a trade show, remember there's a lot of noise going on in business that it's easy to lose track of your message and connect with your audience. So that's why the Noise Behind Business title came about. And today, we will elaborate on the importance of buyers meeting sellers face-to-face. -face. As we go through our webinar presentation today, please, at any time, look at the little panel, and you can type in a question on the board, and we'll answer all of your questions throughout the presentation. And also, at the end, we will have a Q&A session to answer even more questions live. So now I'd like to recognize our webinar sponsor, Nomadic Display. They're the world's leading producer of high quality, custom, modular, and portable trade show displays. And I thank them for sponsoring each of our 2014 webinar series. And also I'd like to introduce you to my co-presenter, Laura Furumoto. Thanks, DJ. You know, over 14,000 trade shows occur in the U.S. each year. So selecting the right show can be such a staggering task that companies often take a dark game approach with unsatisfactory results. According to the Center for Exhibition Industry Research, or CEIR, 84% of trade show attendees have the power to recommend, specify, or make final purchasing decisions, and 49% came to 2012 shows with real purchasing intent. Those are the folks you want to reach. You need the latest tools and techniques to ensure that trade shows you select hit that target market and help reach your goal. So today we're going to show you how. This is the second in our four-part webinar series for 2014. And today's program is designed to help you understand why selecting the right show and performing detailed due diligence is crucial for your success. Before we get started, there are just a couple of housekeeping points. First, if you're experiencing any technical difficulties, please contact GoToWebinar Tech Support at 855-352-9003. And that's up on your screen on this slide. Jot down notes and ideas on your how-to guide today. Now, that was emailed to you in your registration confirmation. So if you did not get that or print that out, please do so now. Don't worry about copying every slide on the presentation. You'll receive an email from us in a couple of days with a link to download this presentation in a PDF format. So, DJ, for those online today who did not attend the January webinar, why don't you give them a quick recap? Thanks, Laura. So, if you attended our January webinar, you were introduced to why trade show marketing, because innovation is a contact sport. The slide shown on your screen goes over what we covered. And for those of you who used those takeaways and decided yes, you want to make your trade show attendance more successful, or you've decided to try them for the first time, congratulations on that commitment. So if you'd like to download for the January webinar or listen to it, write down the webinar address shown at the bottom of this slide. And for this webinar today, the audio files will be available within three business days after this webinar date, and a link will be sent to your personal email address. So let's talk about January, I mean, today's takeaways. We're going to talk about learn the process for selecting the right shows, why you should budget 
before you even select a show, and how to get buy-in from all the relevant players in the company, and know and understand the 10-point litmus test. And then we're going to talk about how to tie in technology with your objectives. So now I'm going to turn this over to Laura to go over the pre-registration survey that each of you filled out. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to provide that profile information during the registration process. I thought it'd be interesting to know that today's group um, mostly represents the um, advertising, marketing, and PR industries. That's 30% of you. Another 20% of you are consultants. And another 20% are other with as specified. And then the remainder are financial services, med, farm, and biotech, and education. In terms of number of employees, almost 70% of you have 20 and under employees. 20% of you have between 21 and 50 employees. And the remainder are between 251 and 500 employees. 40% of you have between 0 and 99,000 gross revenue per year. Another 25% of you have between a half million and a million dollars a year in terms of gross revenue. Another 15% at 100 to 499,000. Another 15% at 1 to 5 million. And 10% at over 5 million. 50% of you have ex exhibited in 1 to 5 trade shows. And about 10% have not exhibited in any trade shows. And then 33% have exhibited in approximately 10 trade shows. 10%, excuse me, 10 trade shows. Now, 50% have participated at a local level, 20% at a regional level, 20% at a national level and 15% at the international level. Now, many of you, over 60%, have been satisfied and happy with the results of your trade show experience. 15% have not exhibited before, which approximately matches those numbers that we went over before that had not exhibited. And no, you have not been happy in 30%. Now, your biggest trade show challenges are boost traffic, Brand messaging and engaging booth design, finding the right show, post-show follow-up, sales conversion, staffing booth and appropriate training, mismatched expectations, and finding qualified leads, niche markets, and then basically cost of exhibiting and how to do a trade show in general. Your biggest trade show triumphs are longevity in your industry. In other words, trade shows have helped you stay in business, for example, 23 years. Um, and others basically say that engaging the person-to-person -person interaction and the availability at the trade show venue to help brand and reinforce your messaging and, re and help other people realize the importance of your services and products and how they can help them. 37% of you have the marketing manager manage trade show activity at your company. Another 45% have other. 10% the sales manager handles it, and another 10% the special events manager handles it. You know, we really appreciate your time and resources. They enabled us to tailor today's program to your demographic and your needs. So let's get to know a little bit why you're here today and what your pressing issues are. We're going to go ahead and take a live poll. So go ahead to your poll section and answer the following question. Answer one through five, which best describes you today. First, you're new and want guidance on the show selection. Second, you need hints on how to get buy-in for exhibiting. Third, you need sufficient budget due diligence for management who's asking for the justification for trade shows. Fourth, you need to know how to tie in technology. Or fifth, you want to identify you want to identify your return on just objective, excuse me, return on investment objective. Now go ahead and if you could please answer. I see that everybody's responding. We'll give another few seconds. All right, Lynn, why don't we go ahead and uh, close the poll. All right, so 
13% of you say that you're new and want guidance on show selection. Another 15% you need to get on how to get buy-in for exhibiting. 50% you want to identify your return on the investment objectives. And 15% you need to know how to tie in technology. Well, the good news is that we're going to go ahead and we're going to address each of those issues today. And if you need more in-depth information, you can wait until the Q&A session at the end of the webinar or call and email us afterwards. So thanks. Wow, that brings us to look at this image. Don't get lost in the noise. To me, this image depicts what it's like to be exhibiting in a trade show. So much is going on. You know, there's lots of people shaking hands indiscriminately, but it does little to drive profit. Often the intent of a trade show is lost in the execution of the details. The bottom line is results, and a measurable return on your investment should always be expected. You know, there's so many steps and activities that really have to be planned and coordinated and timed for successful trade show execution. So how do you make sure that your company doesn't get lost or overlooked in the noise and commotion? And how can you make sure that your not-so-small investment of time and money will pay off for your company and that you won't end up sitting alone in your booth for hours wishing that someone would just stop in and talk to you? The answer is in the pre-show promotion and preparation. So then we go on to selecting the right shows means matching your exhibiting objectives with the right target audiences, the right timing to meet buyers' purchasing patterns with the ability to show and demonstrate your new products or services. So Laura, let's share with the attendees that next strategy guide to really help them plan their strategy for their trade show ROI. Thanks, DJ. Okay, everyone, why don't you go ahead to your how-to guide and take a look at your first resource. It's called the Vision and Action Planning or Strategy Guide. If your company has a strategic plan, then great. You can use that document for helping plan goals and objectives for your trade show plan. If your company does not have a strategic plan, then this document can help identify core elements of that plan. It will help you answer, why are we here? Who are we? And what is our real purpose? So take a look at this form. And take a look at when was your business formed? What purpose did your founders set out for themselves? What motivated them to choose their particular mode of business? If that was in the far past, does it still have relevance in today's economy? Now, you can take a look at those questions and answer them when you have some more time after the webinar. However, now is the time to take action, and sometimes the best way to get, a high, to get to the high level is to give your gut response. So go to the next part of the document and state your company's basic, basic strategic objectives. If you don't have one club answer, then list four possibilities from which to choose. Ready, set, go. For example, if you need some inspiration, we have examples, for example, Walt Disney Corporation to be the world's leading producer and provider of entertainment and information. Go ahead and jot down what you believe your company's basic strategy to be. Now, when this webinar is over, Go ahead and meet with your team and answer the questions during more structured sessions. Ask the facilitator to help with the process. Then compare the results. How did your gut do? And we'd like to know. DJ, why don't you start stepping everybody through the five-step shuffle? You know, thanks, because the five-step shuffle was originally developed by Jonathan Skip Cox. And it's been used with permission in my book, co-authored with Chris Tapas, and the voice of industry thought leaders in the book titled The Noise Behind Business, How to Make Trade Shows Work. It was published in May of 2013. Now, the first step is to acquire a thorough understanding of your company's markets, products, and services, along with your marketing strategy, objectives, and goals. This provides a solid foundation against which to evaluate the thousands of trade shows and events available to you. But be sure to take time to gather and understand the information. And you'll need to evaluate for a good fit, because if you're off base at this stage of the, of the planning process, you'll be wrong on all the steps to follow. 
The most important part of the step is interviewing your marketing and product management and sales personnel. So target these internal groups for input. I would ask your marketing managers to define the profile of their ideal customer, the geographical areas that are covered, and the type of buying or decision-making processes that are involved, along with the strengths and weaknesses of your competition. But I would get specific details from them as to how a particular show aligns with their objectives and who they're trying to reach. Once you get that information, I then go into your Prodigal Vertical Industry Marketing Managers. Now this is where you talk specifics with them and ask them to provide you with the bulk of the information that you'll need. Question them about specific marketing and show objectives. Find the marketing trends and products and applications. Also, what shows do they perceive as the most valuable and ask them why. And then once you get that, I'd move on to the sales force. Now this is where you get the skinny from them. They're the guys and the gals in the trenches who talk with prospects. They'll tell you what's hot, but most importantly, they'll tell you what's on their customers' minds. And then you can determine how their needs best mesh with your company's objectives. So being in the exhibit business for over 20 years now, I see many companies making quick decisions because they hear about a show and they're told to exhibit in it. But if this step is not done well, you may be throwing lots of money away in the money pit for marketing. So now let's move on to step number two. This is a step where you want to seek feedback from your current and prospective customers. Now this step requires that you find out what shows these buyers attend and what value they place on those shows. But most important, their true interest in your category of products. So once you've identified those prospects, you'll want to find an independent list of people that fit into your profile. Now this list can come from your own in-house database or from an outside list database of sources. But just be certain that your final list includes prospects as well as current customers. And at a minimum, conduct formal interviews by phone with maybe several dozen customers. But don't limit your research to, to uh, current clients or to showgoers alone. You'll probably want opinions from a cross-section of your potential audience. And here's what I'd suggest that you learn from them. Three things. Number one, what is their interest level in your products? Do you really know? And now that we're in a consumer attendee-driven marketplace, this information is crucial to identify their interest. And then number two, what are their feelings about particular shows? Maybe they feel the show is a waste of their time, or they've heard little about the show that you're exhibiting in. It'd be really good to find that out. And then number three, what are their feelings about trade shows in general? This is where your target audience may not even go to trade shows. But don't you want to know this information before spending a lot of time and money to select your shows? So maybe this is an opportunity for you to educate your potential or even your existing customers about trade shows and the why they could be important for them. So now that we've covered two of the five steps, I think it's time to have another live poll. Live poll. Laura, Laura I'm going to turn this over to you. All right, everyone. Go to your poll section again in your upper right-hand corner of the attendance panel. And go ahead and answer this. Do you currently seek feedback from current and prospective customers regarding trade show participation? Please answer one for yes or two for no. Now, I'm sure that you ask customers information and feedback on your products and your services and probably some other aspects of your business. But this is specifically for trade show participation. All right, I think just about everybody has answered. So we can close the poll. 38% of you say yes. You do receive specific feedback on trade show participation. And 63% of you say no. So I know you have a means to survey your customers um, for other aspects. And now you can use those mechanisms to research the trade show aspects. Because research is a sound basis for any decision making, and for especially for marketing activity. And trade shows are no different. Let's go ahead and go to your how-to guide. So this resource that says your initial show list. 
go ahead and write down five trade shows that you know of today that you can attend in the next two years. Now, those may be ones that you've known of in the past or done in the past, ones that you've been targeting for the future, and ones that you might consider if you've never done trade shows before. What we want you to do is write down this initial show list and then compare this list to your final list after this training and after you've used the tools provided in the training. What resources before this webinar influenced your show choices? CJ, I know you're going to give us some more resources to help make the right choice in the future. You know what? Yes, I am, Laura. And that kind of brings us to step number three because I really love how we're tying in the live polls because it gives us a feeling of what the attendees, you on the webinar, are doing for your trade show planning. So let's talk about step number three. This is where you create a list of show opportunities. And this is where most companies begin. But really, it's a big mistake. Without the background established in the first two steps that we talked about in one and two, your chances of selecting the right shows are about as good as winning a fortune in Vegas. So the mission is, in this step, to develop the mother of all lists. This is a compilation of all possible shows and events that might meet your company's marketing objectives. Now this list will serve as the basis for further investigation. So when you're selecting new trade shows to attend for the first time, usually attendees are searching for a show that they can trust to deliver the best experience and to connect face to face with colleagues and gather the information that they need to help make them successful business decisions. According to a 2014 report from the Center for Exhibition Industry Research, also known as CEIR, I'm going to share with you the top reasons new attendees attend a specific trade show for the first time. And they're in order of importance from one to six. Number one, it's the reputation of the event. Number two, it's the ability to network with other colleagues. Number three, they want to obtain specific information for issues and decisions that they're facing. Number four, it's the quality of the speakers. Number five, it's the size of the show that's focused on their needs in their industry sector. And number six, it's the value for the money. Now you can find a master list of all shows in the United States and even global by visiting the URL on this screen. Now write this down because uh, it's on the same page as your initial show list and get started today because this has a lot of valuable show information. So let's go on to step number four. Okay, now you're ready to scrutinize each show on your master list and start voting the weaker contenders off the island. The most important step is to talk to the show organizers. Now often this can be the most difficult step because in many cases they don't have the kind of data that you need or they're reluctant to share it with you. And also, there's really no standards for consistency in reporting event information to make direct comparisons easy. It's like comparing apples to oranges. But to make matters worse, the majority of shows don't even have independent audits to certify their information. So you may want to begin by asking organizers for basic demographic information, such as what is their total attendance, but even better, Ask them about their net attendance, because this weeds out spouses, students, and exhibitors. But ask if this figure is audited and verified by an outside agency. And if not, take it with a grain of salt. I know many show managers who turned in marketing numbers for expectations, when in reality the show of may, may even be a flop. So if you're considering a first-time show, investigate the success of other shows may be put on by the same show organizer to evaluate their success rate in the past and research past exhibitors and maybe call them from the past shows to confirm what you hear. So now we're going on to my favorite part. You've done all the macro research and now you can narrow down to the micro level. That moves us to step number five. Now here's where the rubber meets the road. You want to analyze all the information you've collected in the first four steps and make decisions as to whether exhibiting at each show on your list is really justified. Now, if you create a spreadsheet, it makes comparison a little bit easier. In making these crit critical decisions, your analysis should be really based on one of three things. Number one, should your company exhibit? So when you answer this, be sure that you have valuable research 
to back your answer to share with your company. Number two, does the size and quality of the audience meet your marketing objectives and justify exhibiting at the show? Now, if your answer is yes, then I would say what level of investment is justified to reach your potential audience and compete effectively with other exhibitors? Number three, what strategy and objectives should you entertain for each event? So before answering this question, though, remember, ask, should we exhibit? And then ask yourself, does the size of your total potential market justify exhibiting to reach all of them? If your potential market's relatively small, then a show may not be the best vehicle. Or if your market's very geographically dispersed and the show's regional, it may not draw a large enough audience. However, if you can take this time and find out this information early and see the value in exhibiting in trade shows, this can really be beneficial to support your exhibiting in shows and also determine if you need to exhibit local, regional, or even global and national. So when you receive the complimentary ebook, be sure to read more in depth about this step because it goes into much more detail, which includes decision-making aids created for metric tools. So I hope this five-step shuffle has given you a lot to think about, and you're now prepared to spend your company's time and money wisely. But there's a bonus. You'll come, in the, you'll come away looking like a hero, and all that's left is to practice your victory dance. All right, DJ. Well, now we're going to go into some more specifics about the exhibit dollar itself. Exhibiting companies spend more than $24 billion annually on exhibiting. Why do they spend that much money? Well, according to the Center for Exhibition Industry Research, again, CEIR, 99% of exhibitors find unique value delivered by business-to-business -business ex exhibitions, which is not provided by any other marketing channel. This was their feeling. Exhibitors assign top ranking to the value of face-to-face -face interactions at exhibitions. Exhibitors assign high value to exhibitions in helping them achieve their high priority marketing and sales objectives. They trust trade shows to do this. Business to business exhibitions capture the largest share, the largest share of marketing dollars among companies that exhibit. So budget drives everything. And your new exhibit dollar is really not a dollar at all. The percentage of the overall trade show budget. Approximately $24 billion is spent in the U.S. annually. Well, it's allocated in the following categories. And you can see this detail in the slide. Exhibit space, 36%. Show services, 17%. Travel and entertainment, 14%. Exhibit design, including graphics, 11%. Shipping, 10%. Promotion, 6%. Lead management and measurement, 4%. Exhibit staff, staff training, 1%. And other, 1%. Now, there are other uh, more detailed benchmarks in the book including cost per square foot of back wall for each type of exhibit choice, for example, new, custom, rented, etc. When evaluating these percentages, it's helpful to reference that exhibit-related expenses total 38%. Now, again, that's exhibit design, show services, and shipping, especially for those of you who have never exhibited before. It gets to be a, a good, solid investment. And this is important to recall. Because the next decision, what type of exhibit do you need, will represent a significant percentage of your budget. So you'll need to plan wisely. For example, let's play with the math a little bit. If you want a double-decker booth right out of the gate, and it costs $150,000 to design, produce, ship, including services, then that $150,000 represents 38% of a total budget of $400,000. Or if you have a Lexus, Less complex booth, let's say around 15000 for the exhibit show services design and shipping, then that represents 38% of a total budget of $40,000. Remember, it's not just putting up a booth. It's everything else that goes around it, too. Now, a more helpful budget guide might be the cross-industry view on the slide, which shows spending by industry. So I'm just going to take a few examples, and then you can, and then you can kind of see where I'm going with this. For example, so the least cost per square foot, the type of customer that that's associated with is manufacturing in a Fortune 100. And that cost per square foot of $127 is for a large domestic show. 
Now this might not be a lot of bells and whistles and a lot of um, you know, high tech kind of things. So, but I'd like to compare it to the last thing on the list, which is the computer technology industry for Fortune 500. Their cost per square foot bid is $388. And that's for a large domestic and international show. Now you can kind of see how, how this might be. There might be interactive technology, lots of bells and whistles, fancy booths, all kinds of things to engage people. Maybe some live um, feed to um, a TV screen, a large TV screen. Now, these can help you um, benchmark. And benchmarking is a great tool, especially if you haven't participated in trade shows before, to make sure you're not out of line with your cost. See if there are variances that are material. Everyone on your team, including finance especially, is going to want to know about it. So put together an explanation of why the variance exists. Is this a one-time cost? For example, new equipment, a new food, things that won't be incurred in future years because you'll be able to reuse the material. All right. So let's go to your how-to guide again. And we're going to go over effective ways to manage costs. We've provided you with a budget checklist document. The first page of the document is intended to give you a scope of the trade show budget. Now, exhibiting involves many different expenditures because of the numerous components involved. Also, many departments are involved, so it takes a great deal of coordination and managing all the details to make sure nothing slips to the cracks results in unexpected expenses, which can blow your budget, return on investment, and potentially cost you your job. And we have seen this before in experience. For example, if you're new to trade shows, you may not know that the exhibit hall may not let you do any labor setup and then break down your booth. And instead, they may require contract labels to do that. If you're not planning on that cost, those costs can add up and completely blow your budget. So we're not going to go through all the details here, but we've outlined the main um, areas, space, display space, show services, advertising and promotion, and other, with all the details that you need to consider underneath. Now, the second page gives you the scope of how far ahead you need to plan for a trade show and what needs to be done when. You know, it starts with a 6 to 12 months in advance in terms of how your pre-planning goes. But there are some shows that require registration or speaker applications one and a half years ahead of time. Not only that, they give first boot space priority to exhibitors who attended the prior year's show. So be sure to check the specifics in the exhibitor package for the show that you've targeted. You can find those often online now, and still uh, people on, on rare occasion will also send a hard copy if you request it. Now, we're again, not going into detail today on the line items. However, you can use this checklist as a guide when doing your next trade show planning. You know, DJ, I know you've got a great case study about practical ways to stretch your budget, taking into consider everything we've got here on the timeline. You know, I do, Laura. You know, we handle show management for many customers, and we had a customer that bought a new 20 by 20 nomadic display island booth, and we were shipping it to the Heli Expo show in February in California. And uh, we were shipping it to the advanced warehouse. And I don't know how many of you are familiar if you ship to an advanced warehouse, if you have a large booth, or if you ship directly to the show. But I want to share with you their experience. They actually shipped to the advanced warehouse their display. But then they had some machinery that they had to ship on a separate shipment, and then giveaways and brochures and catalogs. Well, what happened was we were advising them on all the costs. You know, for example, if you're shipping to the advanced warehouse, they might say it's $69 per pound for delivery or a minimum of 200 pounds. And that's where exhibitors kind of get lost because if you don't have a big booth and you're shipping multiple shipments, you're going to get that minimum charge like two or three times. Also, if you ship directly to the show, you have a, a smaller window for delivery. And sometimes the trucks will get docked outside and they'll have to wait in a long line to get your booth shipment to your space. What if you have labor assigned through union and you're hiring them to set up your booth and your show starts on a Monday, you know, maybe it starts at 1 o'clock on a Monday and you're trying to set up on a Sunday afternoon and the shippers are coming in and you have your labor team there at 1 o'clock. Well, what if your booth wasn't there? Your labor team could be waiting there and you're still paying them even though your booth's not there 
because of the timelines that are everything involved. A lot of times we tell our exhibitors, go ahead and ship to the events warehouse. It saves a lot of time and headaches. You know your booth gets there. You get first preference for deliveries to your booth space, considering to the ones at the dock. And then also, if you have some handouts or materials that you happen to leave behind and you forgot, and at the last minute, maybe you need a new graphic that you forgot, be very careful where you ship it to. If you ship it to the show, there's going to be some handling fees. Maybe you want to ship it to your hotel and walk it over. There's so many hidden costs involved at trade shows, and if you use this budgeting checklist wisely, you can go through all the timelines and think these things through because that will save you a lot of money and a lot of time and headaches on your end. So we've given you a lot of benchmarks to work with. So let's talk about your budget with a live poll next with Laura. All right. Go to your poll section again. And we'd like you to name your biggest budget issue today. Choose one of the following answers. First, the unknown is your biggest challenge. You're starting from scratch. Second, past trade show overruns or unexpected costs. Third, my for management on final budget numbers. Fourth, shrinking market marketing budget overall or five other. Now, if you if you are answering other, go ahead to the question section. Start typing the first word budget to help us organize. And then go ahead and type in what your truly biggest budget issue is if it doesn't appear here on the list. And we'll go ahead and review that, those answers, along with the rest of the poll. All right, let's see. It looks like the answers are slowly coming in. If everyone can finish up, we're going to go ahead and close the poll. Okay, great. 33% of you said unknown. You're starting from, from scratch. 11% past trade show overruns and unexpected costs. 56% shrinking marketing budget overall. Now, especially for the unknown and the shrinking marketing budget, we're going to address all the other issues too. But we're going to really show you how to um, identify your objectives to make sure that that marketing budget is spent wisely. And we're going to give you a lot of tools to help do that. So thank you again for, for, for answering the poll. Now let's give you a head start on your next budgeting project. Go to your how-to guide to the tool that says visualizing your budget. Now go ahead and name three pieces of information that you and your team need to start working on now because you know there, the, these pieces of information are missing or not in the format you need for your trade show budget. Now, think of the cost and other information you need on a daily basis. Most likely that information will be required to create a trade show budget as well. If this was missing before or not in a way you need it for decision making, then identify that today so you can work on it tomorrow. Now that we've visualized what we need for the budget, TJ, tell us how we can visualize influencing the other decision makers in the process. You know, that's how to, Laura, that you're covering, what you're covering is so helpful with the action items and the checklist. You know, you can all do this, you can all do this pre-show work and have great data and metrics to use for your decision making. But if you do not get buy-in from the key players in your company, you just wasted all that time. And that's valuable time. I've seen this happen so often. I actually worked with a financial company that focused on getting more exposure for selling bitcoins. And the director of marketing was working on his research for the master show of lists and compiling all his data. And he wanted to present it to his boss. And he even went as far as having an exhibit proposal with 3D mock-ups and budget numbers that we did for him. But when he presented it to the CEO and the CFO, after hours of his research that he did, and our time too, his ideas were rejected because he was way out of budget in what the CFO had even planned for the company. So before you go off and do your due diligence, make sure you have that crucial conversation first and confirm that you have the buy-in for trade show marketing innovation and ideas with a realistic budget to proceed. Now that brings us to the 10-point litmus test. Now there's a number of variations that exist for the term return on investment also known as ROI, that you've heard today. And they're being used to better define exhibit performance. 
Some other great metrics that I'd write down include ROO. Now that's return on objectives. And then we have ROR. That's return on relationships. Now objectives are traditionally communicated related. They're communication related. And they're your message, your conveyance, and your awareness building. Now brand enhancing includes changing or improving perceptions. And sales related goals and objectives would be where you generate leads and you make a sale. But a decision around measuring trade show success, it would not be complete without including other enterprise objectives that can be accomplished at trade shows. So let's get started on the 10 point litmus test. Let's go on to number one. Now, does it exhibiting support the larger business goals and objectives of your business enterprise? Now you can do this by setting goals and objectives. Now these go hand in hand, but simply put, goals are the big picture, and objectives are the little pictures that when put together, they create that big picture. And goals are strategic, while objectives are quantified and qualified within a time frame. Now an example of each could be, say an example of a goal, you want to introduce the XC500 smartphone at the Consumer Electronics Show. Now maybe your objectives could be number one, you want to sell 3,000 XC500 smartphones through existing retailers and distribution for a value of 300,000. Or maybe your goal would be you want to generate 20 inquiries from major retailers requesting follow-up visits by reps within 60 days. You know, I train our staff when we get ready for shows. And I tell them it's not about the quantity of the leads, but it's about the quality of the leads, at least in our industry. Now, back in the late 90s, I remember we were exhibiting in a trade show. And when we had the newest technology for our nomadic pop-up exhibit, and we had some large formatted printed graphics of new technology, and we were exhibiting in a regional show, and we had a 10 by 10 booth. And we had a large graphic that showed an apple pie with the apples oozing out of the pie. And the slogan was, graphics as easy as apple pie. And we wore red aprons. And guess what? We handed out apple pie slices to all the attendees that filled out lead cards for visiting our booth. Now, I had to send staff members to Costco twice during that show. It was a one-day show because we kept running out of slices of pie. I received over 400 leads, but however, we were so busy giving out pie slices that the leads really weren't rated and evaluated properly. And we ended up with a lot of follow-up work that took weeks to determine if the leads were even valuable or not. So now we have a new lead rating system to help us define our goals with lead metrics to evaluate leads during the show. We learned a valuable lesson at that show to focus on real goals with real objectives and to tie in the quality of leads with those goals and objectives. So now that we've covered goals and objectives, Laura, let's move on to number two. Number two is, does exhibiting have the support of senior management? And have they made this known throughout and within the organization? Communication and support for exhibiting by senior management should be verbal and written. Trade show participation should appear within the marketing and PR strategies, as well as signing documents as a tactic. An expectation that trade shows are a valuable part of the marketing mix and an important role they play in achieving company goals and objectives should be clearly stated. This includes past accomplishments, lessons learned, and failures, which should be part of the open dialogue so that the blueprint of success for the future can be outlined. You know, because of the complexity of the trade show environment that we've re reviewed in the previous slides, and because their expenditures affect multiple departments from sales to accounting, your barriers to success are often hidden. Open communication will increase the transparency of what you're all trying to achieve and get everyone on the same page. That gets us to number three. Is there a defined outcome expected from exhibiting? You know, if it sounds like if the only reason to exhibit is achieve quantifiable results, you're right. Management is scrutinizing to spend on trade shows relative to quantifiable outcomes and asking the question, did this investment perform to expectations? And is there a more cost-effective medium to get the same result? Remember our poll result, about 70% of you said that you have a shrinking marketing budget. That's why this really comes in and is very important. Without a defined income, quantified as metrics, you don't have a benchmark to drive and evaluate performance. 
and too many times the tough questions aren't asked and therefore your success and those and that of those around you remember you're doing this as a team that success is just uh, without the tools to, to do so justly and fairly unless you really define what that outcome is you know in our first webinar we reviewed in detail the 23 ways to use your trade shows to better your business for insight into these nuances check out your version of the book how to make trade shows work for you that really sets the destination on your trade show navigation and uh, allows you to have a step-by-step -step course to ensure that your dollars that are invested equal a net positive dollar outcome. So here are some survey results that other companies define in terms of outcomes. 84% of exhibitors say that high quality of attendees is the most important factor when deciding to ex exhibit or to expand booth size. 54% say favorable return on investment is an important factor when deciding to exhibit or expand booth size. 50% consider positive past performance an important factor. And that is from the CEIOR's report, The Changing Environment of Exhibitions. Knowing your defined outcome expectations takes you on to the next step, quantifying the metrics. So number four, has the outcome be qu been quantified through metrics? Ask yourself, how do I measure success for your other marketing and sales activities? So some great ways to measure would be that related to trade shows, close ratio at the trade show. First, find out how long it takes on average to close a non-trade show generated sale. I bet your salespeople know this right off the bat, especially for themselves. Then, what are those numbers in comparison to trade shows and why? Many companies don't track the trade show results as closely as they do or that close ratio as closely as they do the non-trade shows. So, a next tool is the CRM system have a tracking field that says client acquired through trade show lead or something similar. And if it doesn't now, it should tomorrow. Social media engagement. It's important to measure pre, during, and post engagement to see if your trade show marketing is moving the needle. Things to document. Pre-trade show. How many friends do you have on Facebook or how many likes? How many is the number growing or staying the same pre, post, pre, during, and post show. Do you have a following on Twitter? Have you ever had a retweet from what you say or do? Do you have clout from others who watch what you say? What about LinkedIn profile views? How many people are linked to you? Some other tools you might consider. Pre-show mailer responses, email newsletters, and email distribution lists for communicating your brand. RSS feeds to your existing blogs or articles. The number of pre-scheduled meetings at the show with key clients and prospects. You know, these are all important internal metrics for all of your outreach activities. And if you have more, great. Measure those two, pre, post, and during show, so that you can truly measure your success. DJ, let's go on to the next one. You know, all of those metrics are so important so we can succeed in business. So that brings us to number five. Are the metrics approved and supported by all constituents in the company? You know, it can take weeks months or a year to understand whether a trade show is even worth an investment. But in the short term, the evaluation of, of trade show is often limited to polling booth staff or counting captured leads and how many were hot. But unfortunately, these trade show metrics don't really impress executives who are hungry to know trade show ROI like right now. So to help speed up your way to predicting trade show success and presenting it maybe to your CEO or CFO or even CMO, I found it best or even simpler, a near-term way to predict whether your hit target trade show ROI is to track and compare the response rates to lead nurture emails that maybe are sent to your trade show list. And then you can track how the leads perform as they progress deeper into the sales funnel. So here's how you can get started. So say you are going to a trade show and you're sending out a minimum of four nurture emails over the next few months before the show. You'd want to measure the email click-through rate, the CTR, of each email. And then you want to segment your trade shows into categories to customize or target your ROI and your click-through rate. And then you measure the rate at which the email clickers convert to a sales qualified lead also known as a SQL. So what a successful process looks like is evaluating your trade show ROI benchmarks for every click-through rate. 
but knowing that your first email will probably or most likely be the highest. And then each sorry about that, y'all subsequent email may drop. But knowing the metric and evaluating the process, it'll keep you on top of getting those metrics approved. So metrics is especially important because they're usually tied to budget. So number six is the budget sufficient to achieve the desired outcome, or should the metrics be adjusted accordingly? You know, make no mistake, tracking ROI takes resources. It's one of the biggest practical deterrents to measuring outcomes. You know, you may identify that to track all the measurable objectives that you've named in order to determine ROI will truly take a quarter time person in terms of hours. You know, you may not have that budget luxury, you know, or you may. So automating systems in either way, so tracking, including database and CRM software, can assist in reducing the workload. However, if you find that the ROI measurements you have set are not achievable in terms of the resources needed for tracking, then please do yourself a favor. Adjust the metrics. It's prudent. Take baby steps. Then, when you can get more resources, then you can go back to the original metrics. All right, let's go ahead and take another live poll. Go to the poll section. And answer the following question. Do you have measurable metrics for trade show ROI in place today? Answer please yes, number one, or two, no. All right, everybody, we're going to close this poll in about 30 seconds, so go ahead and answer. All right, so 13% of you say yes, you do, and 88% say no, you don't. Okay, great. Well, this today is your opportunity. You know, so often we get excited about the business coming in the door from trade shows and the dollars coming in the door and serving the customer that we forget to document our results. And this truly is a crucial mistake. So, TJ, let's move on to number seven. So, number seven, is there sufficient time to plan and execute a, tra a successful trade show project? Well, yes, if you follow the timelines that are set out in your free how-to guide. And think about these items. Align your show selection with current, not legacy, business objectives. And reassess all the trade shows where you exhibit and prioritize what shows make sense and what level of investment. And then analyze your operational expenses and assess where potential money can be saved. For example, can you depot your exhibit regionally to save transportation expenses? Or can you negotiate early move-ins to avoid overtime rates? Or can literature be offered electronically rather than shipping hard copies to the show? But be sure to listen to the January webinar because we talked about some ways to save costs when shipping to advance warehouse or direct show and some hidden costs in that webinar also for proper planning. You may even want to evaluate the cost benefits of outsourcing versus doing more in-house. I know we have many customers that have purchased large exhibits and they realize they don't have the in-house manpower to handle their show management program. So they hire us to store and ship to and from the show and set up and take down for labor. And they even sometimes have us order all their show services. So all they have to do is show up and do what they do best, generate leads by working the booth at the show. So think about it. As you exhibit in that trade show, where else can your company get in front of so many clients and prospects in a concentrated period of time and demonstrate company confidence and strength? Sure, you can post press releases, ads, blogs, social media, but nothing replaces looking into the eyes of your customer to, de to demonstrate sincerity and truth. Again, nothing takes the place of being there. And that moves us to number eight. Are the required staff and resources available? Now this is an important detail that's often overlooked in trade show exhibiting. It's making sure the company's staff is fully prepared for the trade show. Exhibiting at trade shows, it can be a profitable solution for promoting your company, but being prepared is key. Pre-show training is really a cost-effective way to achieve success at your trade show. And it'll add huge profit potential for your company for attending at trade shows. But remember, the booth staff is the image of your company. <clears throat> so 
Who would you want to represent your company on the trade show floor? I find it's interesting, a fact that people attend shows looking for solutions for specific business challenges. And we heard that on that survey. But if you're more interested in getting your message out, you'll never even uncover what's going on in your prospect's environment, much less be in a position to provide a possible solution. Remember, the marketplace is full of competitive new shiny objects. So if your visitors don't feel you're interested in helping them, they'll not tolerate bad old trade show exhibiting behavior. They'll just move on and track down someone else who is more customer centric. That moves us to number nine. Is exhibiting the most efficient strategy to achieve the outcome or would other marketing mediums be more effective? You know, trade show selling is much different than field selling and many companies don't train their staff accordingly. Is it any wonder that leads coming from trade shows? They're perceived as having the same sales value as leads coming from other marketing mediums. But trade shows can be a salesperson's dream, or really it should be if you're at the right shows. You have hundreds of warm leads that come to see you instead of chasing or you chasing after them in the field. There's a lot of richness in this opportunity that still amazes me. But what amazes me too is the anemic effort that most companies make to be successful at trade shows and that many salespeople, in fact, don't even see these leads as opportunities. This discipline should be part of every company's overall sales and marketing strategy and integrated with other efforts such as advertising and sponsorships and social networking and lead nurturing efforts. So now we're going to be tying all this together with Laura's valuable insight for aligning the resources to the metrics. All right, so are the resources aligned to follow up and report back on the metrics? You know, lack of alignment ends up hurting a company's performance in any area. Trade show metrics are no different. Many departments have their hand in the trade show process, as we've shown before, it includes financing, human resources, sales, marketing, management. Time and again, we've seen everyone stumble. Everyone, and the organizations suffer because they were out of sync on expectations for data collection, reconciliation, and reporting. You know, when you get back from a trade show, sometimes everyone goes, phew, and they move on. And when it's done right, so when it's done right, there's no question that when these departments, especially sales and marketing, work well together, companies see substantial improvement on important performance metrics, including those resulting from trade shows. But if finding the roles ahead of time on which person in the department will be collecting the metrics data, and then who is responsible for presenting the report as a whole, you can avoid post-show finger pointing, and it happens a lot. We're trying to help you avoid that. Ultimately, assigning one person the project management over the task is recommended. All right, so let's go to the next really important step, visualizing the buy-in. Name five people, so go to your how-to guide, and name five people you and your team need for buy-in on your trade show. And then sign off, so who are the five people you also need to sign off on your due diligence? Go ahead and take a minute. I bet you know who they are. Keep this list for the next webinar on July 22nd, where we're going to teach you techniques on communicating with different personality types and generations in the workplace. DJ, I know you're going to show us some really exciting trade show industry resources next. You know, I am. And you know, Laura, I'm glad you mentioned the July webinar because it's my favorite about face-to-face -face interaction with all the generational differences and all that. So let's talk about trade show industry resources. You know, this is about, um, in our last webinar, the attendees really liked this slide and there are many valuable resources. So we're going to share it with you again. But I've added a few since the January webinar. The ones bolded are my favorite for great resources. You have the CEIR. That's the best source for trade show industry research. Now, some articles are free, and other research articles are at a cost. But what I really love is this site has a free ROI tool. Then you have the Exhibitor Magazine. This is a great resource for education. It includes design trends and tips and peer experiences that are shared. Then you have Exhibit and Event Marketers Association. Now, this is a good resource for education and information. And then you have TSNN. Now, I get involved often in their LinkedIn group for conversations, and there's some really good educational articles. 
Then you have Event Marketer Magazine. Now this is a good source for corporate meeting and event planners. Now listed on the slide are more online sources that are valuable and have industry news. Take your time to bookmark these sites and do some research on your own and see which ones you find that are more valuable to help you be successful in exhibiting. Now also for more white papers and blogs and additional free educational downloads, go to the link showed at the bottom of this slide. We have a lot of free download tools to help you become successful exhibitors with an ROI mentality. All right. So one of the most valuable tools that we have today, go to your how-to guide, is it's the show space and booth staff collection. Actually, we've had a couple of questions out there in the field um, or from our, our webinar attendees in terms of anything or information you should look forward to evaluate trade shows. Well, it's right here on the show space and booth staff selection worksheet. Now, we're, um, excuse me, we're not going to go through all the calculations needed on this worksheet. Once you know the shows that you would like to consider, please take the time to do the math. Your ultimate goal is to complete the right-hand column to the best of your ability with the knowledge that you have and can research so you have comparable data. So let's go over that right-hand column, your final numbers that you want to derive. The net audience attendees, high interest attendees, potential audience, visitors per hour, exhibit staff required, open space required, and total space. Now, the due diligence on this level is really important because it can help you develop a numbered based and objective evaluation of all the shows that you're considering. So when you return to the office, please step through this worksheet to help evaluate these key resources. Now, keep your how-to guide open. Flip to the next page and write down the 10 things you'll do next with the knowledge you gained today. Go ahead, go with your gut. I know you've been thinking a lot of, about a lot of things as we've been going through the different points, and write down what you're going to do with the knowledge you gained today. I'll give you a few seconds to finish up. All right, you can revisit that at the end of the webinar. Right now, we're going to take the next 15 minutes to half an hour for our Q&A session. We'll be fielding questions through the GoToMeeting question section, so go to that, open it up, and ask away. DJ and I will take as many questions as we can live, and you can reach us after the webinar where we'll get you our contact information at the end of today's presentation. We'll have a slide with all that information. DJ, why don't you go ahead and take some of the questions. Oh, thank you. And make sure you do detach. Um, make sure you do type in those questions. I see three of them already up. The first one says, "How can you know that your exhibit will not get lost in the noise, as you say it at shows?" Well, I wish I could say it was just about your exhibit and your messaging, but today it's much more. It's about developing that strong message that answers a pain or a problem to your target your target audience. Remember, you heard that a little bit in the presentation. And it's, it's really having that pre-show marketing campaign where you use social media and email marketing and et cetera to get attendees to want to come see you. Give them a reason. Then at the show, how do you engage your audience interactively? And then maybe you post-show uh, follow-up needs that keep the same tie-in theme for them to remember you. So maybe you had a theme of your booth and you tie it in with social media and you take some pictures and post them on Pinterest. You know, that's a lot of way to get your attendees involved. If I didn't answer your question effectively, be sure to um, ask me anything else on that. I see number two. It says, for the five-step shuffle, how much time do you see us needing to spend on this? Now, that's a good question, because that really depends on who you assign to do the research. We have the free online research tool that could be used effectively to help you search global, national, regional, and local shows. Now, I'd estimate that the five-step shuffle could take anywhere from five hours to 20 hours. Depends on how many shows you attend by geographical locations and by industry. Now, think about it. That's not a lot of investment to evaluate and come up with an annual plan and budget for your trade show ROI. 
Okay. Someone says they were interrupted uh, several times during the webinar, and they wanted to know if it was going to be available to review online. Yes, there will be a link sent to your email box within two to three business days that will have the whole audio download for you to go back and listen to. All right. Here's another question. The action item that you had us come up with, can we do more than five, or is this what you recommend for a focal point? You know, Laura, I'm going to have you answer that question. You know, what we are trying to do here is to get you really to focus on efficiency and so you don't get overwhelmed. If you go, if you do more than five, great, but make sure that you have measurable metrics and you involve the entire process that we've gone through for each of those five. So yes, we're trying to get you to focus. If you think you can handle more, fantastic. But make sure and follow through on all of them. And I think that's probably the most simple answer, DJ. Let's see. Um, I'll go ahead and take this question. If I have, uh, let me read it for you because it's a, it's a couple of different parts. Um, if I have, if I have participated in show, okay, I'll reread it a little bit because, or rewrite it a little bit because it's a little bit disjointed. I apologize. Um, if you have participated in trade shows in the past, and you're not really sure if you should go forward with those past decisions, then what do you do? Well, let me put it this way. If you're the person who decided to go to the shows, those specific shows in the past, and you are, do not, based on your research and, and your evaluation of some of the tools that we provided you today, if you don't believe that moving forward is prudent, then please go ahead and take that information, report it, document it, and use it as justification for moving forward toward evaluating other shows using the tools that we provided. Especially, and, and this is especially important if you're kind of doing the mea culpa. If you originally selected those first shows and you, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of research involved, it was kind of one of those, you know, dark board kind of things that we covered in the beginning, that's okay, you've learned some lessons, document everything about the shows. And then go ahead and move forward and evaluate the other shows that you're considering more in more detail to be more effective and to define those metrics and expectations ahead of time. If you know where you've had failures, that's really, really important to make sure that you don't duplicate them again. All right, DJ, I'll go ahead and let you take the next question. Oh, thank you. You know, it's, it says here, make sure I'm reading it right, um, and asked about all the handouts. Oh, thank you, someone says, excellent, thank you. Um, we're very, thank you, Dan, for saying it was very informative. I don't see any more questions up there. I'd love the opportunity if you guys have any more, or if we went too fast. Remember, the 10-point litmus test is really ideas that take you through all the stages of getting ready for the show. And it's all about looking at each one as you develop and you get ready to get those metrics. Because as we're all learning, we can all do busy work, but how do we do smart work? And really that's what we're trying to cover today. The other thing is on the, on the, um, the trade show shuffle, I really like that one because really that's your due diligence. That's where you get all your research done before you start even evaluating any metrics. I think uh, I don't DJ, have. Judging, the, go ahead. DJ, you know, judging, judging by the questions, you know, I think what I really liked about the questions is that I think everybody's already imagining how trade shows can increase their business, and that's a really great start. Um, I think now we can move on. So I, I don't see any more questions coming in. So now it's time. It's time to start putting your ideas into action. DJ, why don't you review some of our consulting and exhibit services? All right. So as you see in the slide in front of you, if you guys find yourself, any one of you, that you need maybe someone to review your trade show plan and make recommendations, or maybe you'd like uh, us to help you create a new trade show plan, 
or offer trade show consulting services. You know, we're also offering a 10% discount on any trade show tangible item or any kind of um, design service or business collateral materials. And this offer expires on May 22nd, 2014. We also have additional resources as well oh, on an overall consulting basis for your business. A lot of the times, based on experience, it doesn't matter if you're a small, medium, or large-sized company um, that, you know, a lot of people don't have that basic business strategy or their basic planning done, so they don't have anything to springboard off of for their trade show planning. We also offer that strategic planning for your overall business, marketing PR strategy, marketing PR planning, as well as copywriting for trade show collateral PR, as well as PR media distribution and follow-up. You know, any trade show planning you do should fit into your overall business and marketing strategy and help meet those goals and objectives. We offer, uh, we also offer some additional resources. You know, sales training, we reviewed that in the shuffle. It's so different on the trade show floor. Please ask us if you need sales training for this specific arena. We partner with nationally recognized experts to make your trade show sales more effective. Our sales expert for this particular webinar series is Al Hyman, LLC. Specialty items. Ask us. We went over this in the timeline especially. Some people, when they go to do the trade show, they want to order their specialty items two or three weeks before the show. Oftentimes, there's maybe even a five-week to a two-month lead time. So please ask us about that as well and ask us ahead of time. Our vendors are on the cutting edge, including the latest and desired green promotion. And our specialty partner for this webinar series is OG, excuse me, OCG Creative. Now, DJ, let's wrap it up. All right. So thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your busy day for this webinar and being active with your questions. It really tells us that you're listening and you understand the importance of that due diligence. And we really enjoyed in, in the interaction and hope that you learned a lot through this webinar. I'd like to again recognize our webinar sponsor. You know, without them, Nomadic Display, we wouldn't be able to do this for you. And they're the world's leading producer of high quality custom modular and portable trade show displays. And thank you for sponsoring our 2014 webinar series. And also be sure to, re to register for the remaining webinars in our series. We have July 22nd, Notable Exhibiting Trends. That's maximizing your visual and your verbal communications at the show. And then we have October 21st. That's making the most of your trade show presence, what we call how to tie the ribbon around the package. You'll also be receiving a follow-up email with an attendee survey. And we'd really appreciate your time in giving us feedback so that we can continue to provide you with online education to meet your needs. The email will also include a reminder about how to download your ebook copy of The Noise Behind Business, How to Make Trade Shows Work, or if you'd like the hard copy version, email us at answers at exhib-it.com, and we'll tell you how to get the discount off the retail price. That's all we have time for today. We'd love to hear how you've integrated what you've learned today, and especially in the future, and how you applied it to better your business. We wish you all the best, and thank you.